Uh, Sam Sam, it's dinner time. Hey, what's wrong? I have a stomach ache and it really hurts really bad. <laughs> oh, Sam Sam, I will tell mom and dad that you need to rest here and maybe skip your dinner too. All right, rest well. I'll try. Ouch. Now I got a real stomach ache. Sam, Sam, did you lie about your stomach ache so that you don't have to eat your dinner, then ate all these snacks, and now have a real stomach ache? You know that lying is a sin, right? <laughs> Well, Sam Sam, looks like you are working hard on all your homework. Busy, busy, busy. I am very proud of you, Sam Sam. Keep up the good work. I knew it! It was too good to be true. You lied again, Sam Sam. Oops. You do know that God hates sin, right? He hates it so much that one time he flooded the whole world to wash all the sinners away, except for Noah, his family, and a bunch of animals. Is God going to wash me away too? Not anymore. God sent us Jesus. When we accept him as our savior, he will offer to wash away our sins. But we still need to choose to obey God's word so that our hearts stay pure. Phew. Thanks, bro. You know, we all have sins that need to be washed out of our lives. So as we go into our second sermon from our Noah sermon series, we're going to learn that Jesus offers to wash away our sins. But we still need to choose to obey so that our hearts stay pure. And teacher Kenneth will be teaching more about that in today's sermon time. So let's listen. Hey kids, I hope you all had a wonderful week. It's really amazing how much stuff we get to do in the week's time. But have you ever stopped? to notice how much time of our week we spend on cleaning? How often a day does your parents tell you to pick up toys, clean up your room, make your bed, or brush your teeth? There's a lot of cleaning right there. But that's hardly the beginning. Someone, and if you're old enough, that someone includes you, has to vacuum the floor, clean the dishes, Shake out the car um, dirt from the carpet, sweat the floors, mop the floors, do the dishes, do the laundry, take the laundries, do the dry cleaners, um, dust the furniture, sweep the porch, scrub the toilets, clean out the cars, um, polish the silver, dust the china, clean up the beds, clean up the clutters, and um, clean up litter box or dog bag bags, um, wash the dogs, clean the ground. Wait. There's so many, and then or even um, change the light bulb, scrub the top, replace uh, that battery, replace filters, and also like if you have a pool, you have to clean the pool and also change the filters. Um, wow, gosh, did I forget anything? Cleaning is fun, but it's necessary to keep an orderly, safe, and healthy home. Do you want to leave live with all the trash? And if we don't clean the house or clean our pets, we can get bugs and germs in the house. Same goes for keeping garage in the house clean, right? Or like um, keeping the um, leftovers in the fridge not too long so that it won't grow germs. We have to get the dust and dirt and grouped out of our house or else our health or even mental health will suffer. 
God wants to do a cleaning job on our house as well, and not just only the house that we live in, but the one inside our hearts. God wants to come in and sweep away every trace of our old and sinful life, and He wants to keep us clean. That's just one of many lessons we can take away from today's story. Our hero, Noah. Last week, we talked about Noah's Ark being a popular theme of babies' nurseries. We love to look at all those cute animals and the rainbows across the sky. But you don't see the pictures of people drowning, banging on the door of the ark, or begging to let into the boat. But you know what? That's part of the story. It's tragic what happened when the water floods came. But God wants us to know that He was serious about sin. The world had become so overrun with sin. God decided to start over. The flood waters covered the whole earth. They got into every hole and cranny, leaving no spot untouched. God completely purged the earth so He could start over with one family, the only one left that believed in Him. God's message in the flood was this: "I will not tolerate sin." Thankfully, God put a rainbow in the sky as a promise He would never flood the earth again. He also sent His Son Jesus so that He could take care of our sin problem, one heart at a time. Romans six twenty three tells us that the punishment of sin is death, separation from God. But when Jesus, who never sinned, died on the cross, He took the punishment for our sins upon Himself. Jesus conquers sin and death, and He's the only one who can clean our hearts of our sin. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, we are making two commitments. First, we are committing to make Jesus Christ as our Lord for our lives. Second, we are committing ourselves to turn away from sin. When we accept Jesus, we need to clean out everything that might lead us into temptations. And we need to keep those things from coming back. Jesus can help us identify those sins, and it's important we obey Jesus, relying on Him, so that we can prevent those sins coming back. We are going to stumble and fall, and when we do, Jesus is faithful and He will forgive us. But when that happens, we need to renew our commitments to keep a clean heart. Paul puts it best when he wrote Philippians four eight. So kids, let us do exactly what God tells us from His Word. Let's ask Jesus to purify our hearts, to keep it clean, and to help us to keep a pure heart so that we will not get tempted and fall back into sin. Let us pray that we can all do that together by relying on God. Dear Lord, I confess there are sins in my life. Thank you for sending Jesus to clean our sins. Lord, I need your strength to defeat the sin. I am thankful that your power is made perfect in my weakness. I don't boast in my life, but boast in you who works in my weakness to make me more like you. I know that I have the opportunity to glorify you by fighting against the sin in my life. Give me wisdom and perspective when I am tempted to sin. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Have a good week. See you next Sunday. Bye. It's dinner time. Hey, what's wrong? I have a stomach ache, and it really hurt really bad. Sam, Sam.
Yeah, Miss Dinner Time. Hey, what's wrong? I have a stomach ache and it really hurts really bad. Sam Sam, it's dinner time! Hey, what's wrong? I have a stomach gag and it really hurts really bad. Sam Sam, it's dinner time! Hey, what's wrong? I have a stomach gag and it really hurts really bad.